all you cool cats and fine felines. It's Leah and Lynn. And today we are in New Orleans, Louisiana at the corner of Burgundy and St. Peter. So follow us. And Lynn, what are we going to do? Get into the groove. That's right. <laughs> Here we are at the corner of Burgundy and St. Peter Street in the French Quarter. And why is that significant? Because right here at this corner stands the St. Peter Inn. And this is where Johnny Thunders passed away on April 23rd, 1991 in room 37. Born John Anthony Genzel in July of 1952, he came to prominence in the early 1970s as a member of the New York Dolls. They were like the first glam band ever to see them perform. I mean, Johnny Thunders inspired countless guitarists throughout music history. Everyone wanted to be just like Johnny Thunders. He is the epitome of cool. Later he went solo and his band was called the Heartbreakers. His first musical performance was in the winter of 1967 with The Rain. Shortly thereafter he played with Johnny and the Jaywalkers under the name Johnny Volume. Um, Around the corner from Carnegie Hall on 56th Street near 7th Avenue is where they performed for the first time. The bass player for the New York Dolls, Arthur Killer Kane, later said about Thunder's guitar sound. He said, I heard someone playing a guitar riff that I myself didn't know how to play. It was raunchy, nasty, raw, rough, and untamed. I thought it was truly inspired. His sound was rich and fat and beautiful, just like a singing voice. The New York Dolls were signed to Mercury Records, um, and Thunders recorded two albums with the band, The New York Dolls and Too Much Too Soon. Um, they were actually, they worked with Malcolm McLaren for several months, and later they, they pretty much became the prototype for the Sex Pistols. Uh, Johnny Thunders in London, he recorded his first of a number of solo albums, beginning with So Alone in 1978. They said the drug-fueled recording sessions featured a core band of Thunders, bassist Phil Lynette, which Phil Lynette is amazing. Thin Lizzy is a great, great band. The drummer Paul Cook from the Sex Pistols and guitarist Steve Jones from the Pistols. The guest appearances on the album was Chrissy Hines, Steve Marriott, Walter Lure, Billy Rath, and Peter Parrott. In the 1980s, Thunders lived in Paris and Stockholm with his wife and daughter. He would go on to have two daughters and two sons through his life. Um, in 1985, he released a collection of new songs with his band, The Black Cats. His last and final recording was a version of Born to Lose, and it was recorded here in New Orleans 36 hours before his tragic death at the young age of only 38. He still had so much to give the music world when he died. Now, there's a lot of conspiracy around the death of Johnny Thunders. Um, he apparently died of drug-related causes, but it's been speculated that there was foul play. Um, according to his autobiography, Lobotomy, Surviving the Ramones, Dee Dee Ramone took a call in New York City the next day after Thunder's death and said, they told me that Johnny had gotten mixed up with some bastards who ripped him off for his methadone supply. They had given him LSD and then murdered him. He'd gotten a pretty large supply of methadone in England so he could travel and stay away from those creeps, the drug dealers. Thunders 
imitators and losers like that. So he had come to New Orleans to kind of clean up and, and record, and um, it just went awry somehow. Now, according to the coroner in New Orleans, he died of a combination of an overdose of cocaine and methadone. Um, the chief investigator said that tests completed the week of his death said there was substantial amounts of both drugs in his system. But there's a lot of speculation about that too because if you're taking methadone every day, that drug is going to build up in your body and if you're used to taking it, it could look like a fatal amount, but you know, if your body is used to that amount, you need more and more to affect you. Now, according to some of his friends, um, they confirmed that he had died of leukemia, which would really explain the decline of Thunder's appearance in his final years of life. Um, even his sister had pretty much validated that claim that he had had leukemia at the time of his death. And people really wanted the coroner to investigate the case more, but the coroner in New Orleans kind of treated it like he was just some junkie that wandered into town and died. And they just simply were not interested in opening the case again because, I mean, that's, that's what they concluded because of the drugs in his system. And Johnny Thunder's memory and influence will go on forever. Um, there, so many people are influenced by his style, the way he played guitar. Just he was the epitome of a rock star. When you think rock star, Johnny Thunders comes to mind. Johnny Thunders, Keith Richards, they are the epitome of like a, a pirate, a traveling traveling rock star that will come into your town and just rock your faces off and I mean it, he was amazing and they said when they found the body rigor mortis had already set in so he had been dead for a while um, rest in peace Johnny Thunders okay so we got a new camera and you can see I accidentally recorded this vlog in slow motion I'm still learning how to use this new camera. So what we're saying is, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button. And I hope you enjoyed this because we really enjoy doing all these vlogs and bringing you along with us. So until next time, as Lynn says, stay groovy.